All right, we want to touch on this right here. This is a little word picture, a little word picture um, a demonstration, actually. Now, as you see, this is one of the um, the kings, and it's interesting when you look at this symbol right here, this symbol right here, this is the, the crook. Now, it's interesting when we touch on the so-called shepherd kings. Now, um, you might have seen this particular picture right here. This is a kind of a popular image that um, many debate whether it's the so-called um, Hyksos or the, the Hexus or if it's the Hebrews. Some say it's even a picture of the Hebrews um, going into Egypt, a likeness of the picture of the Hebrews going into Egypt. Now, a little more background on this would be important. Now, in the 12th dynasty, the 12th dynasty, it had ruled at the place called Memphis, right? We're not speaking about Memphis, Tennessee, but it's interesting how they would name themselves after that particular place. So the 12th dynasty ruled at Memphis in Egypt in about 2000 to uh, 1788 B.C. And there is abundant evidence that there was frequent intercourse, some say, between um, ancient Syria and Egypt during this period in time. Now, what's especially interesting, many say, and let's bring this up over here, what's especially interesting, this is uh, another, um, another graphic, and this is another one during the time of who we're about to speak about right here, that especially interesting, and we're deriving some of this from a book that we've been revising and updating and hope to release soon, um, Egypt's debt, or Israel's debt, rather, uh, to Egypt by um, Edward H. Uh, Sugden. And he says, especially interesting in, is the, the picture that's in the tomb of one whose name um, Kanum Hotep at a place called Beni Hashan. And this is a part of the picture right here. This is a part of the picture. Now, this is said to say, um, um, Heck, Heck Shoes, or Heck, Heck, or Heck Shoes, who's known as the Hyksos. Now, this particular um, um, graphic that we got from a web page on the internet said that in the tomb of Kanum Hotep is supposed to be this uh, symbol, which is said by Egyptologists to mean. Um, foreign rulers, or so-called Hyksos, or shepherd kings. And this is a graphic of that. So Edward uh, Sugden goes on to state um, concerning this um, picture, this especially interesting picture right here that we have that was found at, or that is found um, in the tomb of Kanum uh, Hotep at Beni Hashan, in which the chieftain, the chieftain um, Abisha, this chieftain of this group right here, was said to be named um, Abisha or Absha, is represented along with 37 of his tribe that they name as the Amu, Amu, or some say that is to say the Egyptian way of saying the Syrians, bringing gifts to Kanum Hotep, one of the chief officials of Usur. Tessin the second. Now the date of the visit is given as the sixth year of Usur Tessin the second, i.e., roughly about 1900 B.C. And the gifts include uh, stibium, stibium or um, eye paint, eyelids paint, paint for the eyelids, a handsome ibex, a gazelle and a large block of what seems to be tin. Now, the chief is introduced by two scribes. Say so the chief is introduced by two scribes. Some say maybe these are the scribes, but remember they said there's, there's 37. There's 37 of this group. Now, we're going to show you another picture that is, was actually an inspiration to do a little comparison here. But just to get the background, so the chief, Abisha, is... Um, introduced by two scribes and is followed by his attendants and family. Whilst there is no ground for supposing that the picture represents Abraham's or Abraham's visit to Egypt, it affords a striking confirmatory parallel 
to the biblical or the Bible story. Such visits as this were the first ripples, ones would say, the first ripples in and of the rising tide, which was destined before long to submerge the ancient monarchy of Egypt under the flood of so-called Semitic migrations when the Hyksos or the shepherd kings established their rule in the delta, in the Nile Delta, when the shepherd kings or the Hyksos, the Hexus kings established their rule in the Nile Delta and held the supreme power in Egypt for a couple of centuries. So some say it was migrants like these, you understand, who basically were either the Hebrews or the Hyksos or the Hexus or the shepherd kings. Now, it is worth remembering that when Abraham came down to Egypt, the pyramids were over, some say, a thousand years old. Others would dispute that, say, perhaps um, maybe a couple of thousand years, if not 10,000 years old. And that at this very time, Usir Tessin I was setting up the great obelisk, which still stands near Heliopolis. Now, um, Abraham is no shadowy figure and some now link that story with this particular story right here now we just wanted to give you that background now the next um, graphic we'd like to show you so this is one that they, they said the native kings who restored you understand we don't want to give you an uh, incorrect name but one of the native kings some say these were the Kushite kings or the Ethiopian kings but what's interesting is that this particular king here has the shepherd's crook and not the crook and the flail but the shepherd's crook now some can interpret that might be a link to the Hyksos or the Hyksos or the Hekshals or the shepherd kings now we have focus on this picture right here right this is the artist's um, rendition of the people even known as the Amu some say they're Syrian others say they perhaps were Hebrews some say they were Hyksos Others, like the one who put this particular graphic together, said that basically Hyksos was just another way of saying migrants, foreigners, you understand, and not any particular uh, tribal de uh, designation, but they were not the native rulers. And then here you can see a map of a nobleman of the 12th century, Kunum Hotep, one of the officials of Usur, the Tessin II. And here you can see the Nile, the Nile Delta. This is the area known as the Nile Delta. This is Sinai, which is in the news. This is um, the Delta. As you come down, here would be where it was found in what's known as the Beni Hassan region. And then down here is the Valley of Kings. And this is supposed to be representative of Kanum Hotep. Kanum Hotep, right? Now, let's get back to the artist's rendition. This is the popular, one of the popular artist's renditions of this particular wall painting, um, famous wall painting at Beni Hassan. Now, people would take this and say this is what they must have looked like. But now here we have this right here. Let's back up and let's see if we can compare and contrast this. This is more of an actual, an actual, we don't know if it's recent, but perhaps it was recently photographed, an actual, um, picture of this particular wall painting that we have here you see right here wall painting let's get the portion let's get the portion right here that we can um so we had to actually cut and paste something here because look look, look at this carefully let's let's move this over here like this right now you see something about these two right here this is supposed to be act up here is the actually how it looks in the wall painting look at the colors Look at her complexion. Look at the colors, complexion. You look at the features. Because if you look down here, now let's bring up the woman. If you look down here, let's get that cut that we have. Um, where well we had that, it's down here that we had to cut the two pictures to, to, together to get a better, a more accurate um, comparison of the two. Okay, here we go. And we'll move this on the bottom so you can see that this is actually how it's supposed to look so we had to cut it right here as you can see we had to cut it right here so it resembles what's on the actual wall painting you see this is the actual wall painting 
You see the complexion, the features. You know what I'm saying? Like a group of black people. You know what I'm saying? A group of Ethiopians or black men. It's African American. Blacks over here, blacks over there. You can basically see that it looks different complexion. Right? Now, down here, we see the children on top of the donkey. Now, here is the artist rendition. This is the artist rendition. Do you see this carefully? Let us compare now and contrast. Let us bring this um, clip right up here. Now, we bring this clip right here together with the actual. This is the actual. This is the real. And now this is what's been put in the books. And others of us have been forced to use. You understand? But look at the complexions carefully. All of them are the same complexion. This is what they call the so-called Middle Eastern hype. I mean, the Middle Eastern type. But this is the Middle Eastern hype right here that when we say that, well, the Israelites, you know what I'm saying, were black people. If these are actually Hebrews and Israelites were black people. They'll say, no, look at the painting. And we look at the painting that they provide us unless we search out the actual painting and then we compare. Look at the woman for a moment. Compare and contrast the woman. Let's bring the woman up here to the same level as the other woman. And let's move the the Hexus men or the Amu, some say it's the Amu, others say that Amu is linked with the Amu Yisrael or the people because Ami mean my people, some can say it's the Amhara because we have the chief in his name um, Abisha, you know what I'm saying, or Absha, which is very interesting there, but now as we compare and contrast the artist's rendition, this is the artist's rendition, right, this is the artist's rendition here, over here, we compare and we contrast the artist's rendition, the artist's version, and with the actual version, the actual wall painting, what do, you, what do you notice? You notice the complexion. Look at the complexions carefully. So this is the actual, and this is the artificial. So when you see this painting, although it's pointing to the right people and to our people, you can see how they have repainted. Some would say this is, has been faked. In a sense, it's in the form, you understand, it's in the form, in the, in the outline of, it's as though it were, but it's not really. Look at the complexions here, where they all seem to have all the same complexions. And then you can see a little bit of the covert racism in the art, because when you take the entire picture that they give us, first of all, they, they flipped it around. They must have mixed it up, because you can see that the men, the men are over here, right, which some may say was a part of this over here, but they give it in a kind of about-face way, right, and down here is some harpist, a bowman, there's a donkey right there, there's the woman and the child with the spear and the two younger ones riding on the donkey. They say this is obviously the, the Hyksos, who could be immigrants or foreigners, or some say the Hexus, which could be shepherd kings, and this here is supposed to be the native Egyptian. These are supposed to be like the native Egyptian, and these are supposed to be like the so-called Semites. But now, when we take a look at the actual, when we look, take a look at the actual, you can see it clearly. Even the Egyptians have a darker, you understand, um, a deeper reddish brown, you understand, some people say blue-black complexion right here, and you can see that the so-called Hexus, or the Amu, you can clearly see what their complexion, they range different hues of black. They range different hues of black. You can see it clearly when you look at it, but then in their artist rendition, they have them all the same complexion. So that we thought was very, very interesting. An alternative version of it can be seen right here. You understand? And here is another picture of the actual, and you can see that the same Egyptians and saying, go back to the, bring up, bring up the Egyptians, the same Egyptians right here, and saying, are portrayed right here like this. But now, but notice that the similarities of complexion between the Egyptians, a different hairstyle, different garments they're wearing, but you can see the similarities of complexion. This is why Joseph was not known, you know, saying, to his brothers. And Joseph was not known. They, they took Joseph to be another Egyptian. They did not know who he was. But if you were to judge from this later artist's rendition, 
when you compare it with the original, you can clearly see what they have done in some overt and definite effort to deceive because there's no way that you have the differences in complexion here and here with the woman and the men and then you have it over here like this and then with those who are not seen further in this particular one here we can see the complexions here that's close to the Egyptian complexion yet when we look at the art that's been provided for us elsewhere we see um, that all the men, everybody has the same, and this is not 37 people. If we discount those two Egyptians or Kamites, it's not 37 people. So about the Hyksos, the Hyksos, the Hyksos story, the Hekshaw, you understand, is a very interesting story, as well as when we look into inner Africa as Macy and others point us, as we can see right here, with whom some call Tutmos, We've seen some even call him Ramses, Tutmos and Ramses. It seems to go back and forth. But you can see his hairstyle, right? And the, the, ne, the Nehesi, or the Nazi, the Nehesi, Nehesia, who were what you see in some older works, they call them the Negroes. This is a Tutsi. This is a Tutsi hairstyle right here. Remember Rwanda? This is a Tutsi hairstyle. Notice the Tutsi hairstyle here. And then notice the quaff, you understand, of this style who is said to either be Tutmos by some and said to be Ramses by others. You know what I'm saying? So you can see the similarity. So out of inner Africa, so the black presence is very clear in ancient Egypt as well as the she shepherd king um, insignia, such as this um, pharaoh or this ruler carrying the shepherd's staff, not the usual two staffs, he might have a staff here, you understand? Or some would say an ankh, but he's carrying this staff on his shoulder, the shepherd's rod, you understand, on his shoulder. So there's a couple of interesting things about this right here that we need to make note of. First of all is that a lot of the archaeology, a lot of the archaeological pictures that we see, especially when they've been repainted for tourists or for the, to appease the present occupiers of Africa, the Arab so-called occupiers or Middle Eastern type occupiers, like they complain about the state of Israel, well we need to also complain about them. They are occupying our ancient land and they are perverting and repainting us out of the story. You understand? You can see clearly how they repainted us out of the story. But when you look at the original picture, you understand? A picture of the original wall painting from Beni Hassan during the time of Kanum Hotep and Usur, Usur uh, Tessin II, you can see clearly that it's our people, that is black people, that is Hebrews, and that is Ethiopian, the Ethiopian Hebrew type is clearly demonstrated in the actual pictures, but has been um, Arab hyped or, you know, or Arab washed. You know saying it's been Arab washed here. It's very clear. So this is just a little demonstration to kind of a show and tell. This is a show and tell right here. This is another picture from what some would say maybe is an earlier period. And this is another drawing that they've done. Imagine when you look at the original drawing and the original hues and colors. You can see how they're trying to make the Egyptians like white people for tan or something right here. It's just totally dishonest. It's dishonest historically, and that's part of a lot of the confusion surrounding both the Bible and um, Egyptology. So uh, give thanks for your viewership, and you know, let us know what you think, and visit us at www.lojsociety.org. Shalom. Rastafari.